Well, it's another really frigid morning. Uh, that's kind of been the story this winter in northern Minnesota. But um, I'm just bringing a sled load of wood in for Sierra because I am leaving. And I'm heading to the remote um, off-grid log cabin for, I think, two days. Uh, we'll see. But I'm going to head up there right now. I need to get going here. But Sierra's going to be running the homestead by herself. So, uh, but she can handle it. But she'll have to melt snow for the chickens, uh, their, their water, and for her water and all that. So it's going to be all on her. But like I said, she can handle it, no problem. All right. Come on, baby. We're in business. Let that warm up about 20, 30 minutes. Well, we are off to the promised land. It's gonna be a fun trip, this trip. I'm really looking forward to it. I'll be getting some stuff done around the log cabin and doing some other cabin activities. But tomorrow I'm gonna head into the Boundary Waters Wilderness um, area and go check out some pictographs. There's pictographs not too far north of Ely, Minnesota. Uh, but they're within the Boundary Waters, so it'll be a nice day hike in there. And yeah, I think they were they were painted like 500 to 1,000 years ago by the Native Americans, because the Native Americans used to populate that area. So it should be a lot of fun. I'm really into that stuff. It's kind of a cool piece of history, and I've always wanted to check them out. So uh, I'm gonna go check them out, and it'll just be a nice day trip. Well, we're on the back roads now and we're sending it. They must not be logging back here anymore because this hasn't been plowed in a little while, but there's not too much snow, so I think it'll be okay. At least I hope so. Because, like I've said before, you do not want to get stuck back here. You're a long ways from help. Well, I think this is as far as I'm going to go. I made it quite a ways back here. But this right here is not really a road, and there's a lot more snow there than there is on this little road I came in on. So I'm not that far from the cabin, so I might as well just stay where I know I'm not stuck than try to risk it. All right, I'm back to where I was parking uh, when these were plowed. Um, they're definitely not done yet. They still have logs to grab right there, you can see, but um, the road has not been plowed in a while. But it's snowshoes from here on out. I was able to walk on the road here, on their logging road, but I don't know, I probably could have made it back here, but like I said, it's just not even worth the risk at all for as short of a hike as, you know, it's only three quarters of a mile for my vehicle right now, so why even risk it? Yeah, we'll be breaking trail the whole way in. I see Pine Martin tracks again. None towards the cabin though, so hopefully he stayed out. Well, this thing looks like it wants a fire in it. Uh oh, now I'm nervous. The tracks are going underneath the cabin. Right there. Well, we'll see what we find when we open up the door, huh? Yeah, he got into my garbage bag I didn't haul out last time. And boy, did he. Well, it's not too bad. At least it's not flour. That flour was kind of messy to clean up last time he got into that, but this isn't too bad. It's just some paper towels and a couple other things. 
Could be worse. Well, I've been messed to clean up. Yeah, I've never had problems, you know, up until this year. I mean, with Pine Martin. We have mice get in here, but I mean, that's pretty typical for a cabin in the middle of the woods. But um, they're not too bad, but this Pine Martin makes a mess. So we're just going to have to, or I'm just going to have to make sure I never, ever leave any garbage here ever again. Um, and I meant to take that out last time. And then everything else is just going to have to be in totes. Anything that he could get in and wreck. But we're gonna hang out right here for a little bit because it's chilly. I didn't realize how cold it was today actually uh, until I started walking, but it's definitely a little chilly out there. But yeah, the cabin usually takes about, I don't know, 45 minutes to an hour to, to warm up. I mean, to where you can actually start shedding layers and all that. Um, but normally it's not this cold when I, when I come in, but it's definitely got a little bite to it out there. Here's my food bag. Got some ranch, some chips. Got a lot of snacks. Some peanut butter, some tortillas, lunch meat, cheese, more snacks. These things here are definitely, you know, not very good for you, but um, they're quick and easy to make and they actually taste really good. Really good backpacking meal there. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm only here for one night, but I was going to have uh, some lunch meat and cheese in a wrap right now for lunch. Give me a little bag of chips and uh, 
Yeah, the rest of the stuff I'll just kind of munch on tomorrow while I'm out in the boundary waters. Oh, I brought some tuna too. Really good. Really good little meal is uh, peanut butter tuna tortillas. Those are pretty good. So our little buddy, I'm pretty sure is getting in right here. You can see some light next to that bunk bed post. Um, it's a very small hole, but I think that's where he's getting in. Like I said, he is, he is of the weasel family, so he can weasel his way through some pretty tight spots, but I'll get that, I'll get that plugged up and hopefully we don't have any more issues with him coming in. Yeah, I thought he was getting in up by the ridge beam where the ridge beam kind of meets the Reflectix insulation and all that, but all of his tracks are underneath the the cabin. So I think he's coming in from from over there. I didn't notice that spot before, but I looked around a little harder this time and saw some light back there. So we'll plug that, and then I think we should be good. All right, let's get the party started. Ooh, that is refreshing and warm. It's too bad I didn't bring any whiskey to put in here. I could have had a hot toddy. It's all right. It'll fill me up. Hey guys, wanna see something funny? Check out this dirty backwoods mullet that Sierra cut me. So I do one haircut a year and I always just shave my head in April and then I grow it out the rest of the year. So it's short during the summer and then longer during the winter and then yeah, every April I just shave it uh, with a number two razor and I never pay for a haircut. Uh, but this year I wanted to do something different. Uh, Sierra likes when I have long hair. Uh, she thinks I'm cuter and she's the one that has to look at me. You know, I don't have to look at me so I don't care what I look like. Um, so we compromised. I was like, well, long hair annoys me because, you know, it's in my eyes. I always have to wear a hat and flip my hair back and, you know, kind of tie it back with a beanie or a hat or something. Um, so I was like, hey, I've kind of always wanted a mullet. I had a mullet as a little boy growing up. Uh, I was like, let's go for it. So she agreed and we compromised. So I got the hair out of my eyes, got the business haircut in the front and the party in the back. Um, but yeah, it's a dirty mullet. I understand that. Uh, but 
Um, it looks a little better when it hasn't been compressed by my beanie all day. I mean, when it's freshly washed, it's, it looks better. It's still, it's still gross, but it looks a little bit better. Uh, but it was a backwoods haircut. She did it with a dull pair of scissors, her first time ever doing it. Um, and I'm going to rock it. So this is the new haircut for Kyle's cabin. Well, it's about 9.30 p.m. I'm going to go lay in bed, maybe read a little bit, and then go to sleep. And tomorrow morning, we're going to wake up and go on a pretty cool adventure. I'm actually really excited to go check out those pictographs. It is snowing pretty good right now, too. Hopefully that stops soon and we don't get too much snow since my car is back here. Good morning. I just got the fire ripping. It's a little chilly in here. I let it, the stove pretty much go out last night. But I'm gonna have myself a quick cup of coffee and then start the hike out of here. I'm going with Folgers Instant Coffee this morning. I stopped at the store on the way here and was going to buy some coffee and then I walked past these and saw these and I want to get going pretty early this morning and I was like, you know, I want to give those a shot. Just boil some water, stir it in, pretty easy. I, I, can't, I, I don't think I've ever had instant coffee, so we'll see. I've heard, heard some people say they don't like it. Can't be that bad. Smells good. I don't know, it smells fine. got a different taste for sure. It's nowhere near as good as a uh, French press or percolator, but when you do when you just don't want to mess around and you want a hot cup of coffee right now, it does the does the trick, I guess. Yeah, it's not bad.
you know, I'm actually very excited to go check out these pictographs. I've been wanting to do it for a long time, and it's a pretty easy hike in there. I was looking last night, and it's, I think it's just over, it's like two, two and a half miles um, from the entry point. Um, then you have to walk across a couple lakes, and then there, uh, the pictographs are on a kind of a cool cliff where the lake kind of narrows and turns into a creek before it dumps into the next lake. Um, but I'm excited for the walk. It's going to be a beautiful walk. It's not too too cold today. It's uh, going to be just a couple of degrees below zero Fahrenheit. And uh, compared to what we've had, that that's like a beautiful day this winter. I mean, it's been minus 20, minus 30, it seems like all of January. I mean, minus 30, minus 45 degree Fahrenheit wind chills. Um, it's been a cold winter. So today will definitely be, uh, it'll definitely feel warm today, even though it's still going to be below zero. But as long as you're moving and all that, you know, you stay plenty warm. But yeah, it'll be it'll be a, a good time. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm kind of into that stuff, you know. It's cool that, you know, Native Americans inhabited this area that I'm headed to. Um, yeah, I just, I just wish I could go back in time and see what they were doing out there and what they had kind of set up and where their camps were and, you know, where they, what kind of game they were getting and, and all that. It's interesting. Well, Sierra texted me, uh, good morning, so she survived the night back at the homestead by herself, doing the wood stove all on her own and all that, which she is fully capable of doing. So that's good. Oh, the batteries are dead. That's what's going on. <clears throat> that sucks. I'll just have to bring new ones next time I come. See, so, yeah, these are the new, new logging roads that they put in uh, just this fall. So uh, where you guys used to see me like like rolling the wood stove up that hill and. All that, that was like right in here. So it's just, it's just a flat road now. And the cabin is way up in there. Pretty out this morning. Well, it starts, that's good. Now it's just trying not to get stuck, but at least I got a full tank of gas, so we got plenty of heat if she doesn't, or if we can't get unstuck. No time. 
time to let it warm up. We're just gonna give her. It's cold. Worst invention ever, right there. That dinging noise. So yeah, even though I'm not staying the night in here, you still have to do a do a self-issued permit this time of year. There we go, now we're legal. So I am right here and we gotta hike this little portage. And then we're gonna come this way, go across this portage, come across this lake, and then right where it narrows right here is where those pictographs are. So let's go check them out. Beautiful morning in the woods here. If you can see, this is a fairly used path. I'm the only one back here today there was a dusting of snow last night there's no fresh tracks but people do come and winter camp in here and like i said you know it's a nice easy day trip to check out these pictographs so it's a decently used uh route here because during the summer you have to you know portage and you're going to be paddling to go check out these pictographs but in the winter you can walk right across the lakes so like I said, it's only like two and a half miles or so in one way. So it's a nice little day hike in the Boundary Waters, new area wilderness in Northern Minnesota. All right, well, I came from down that way and around the corner. Here is the portage from South Hagman into North Hagman. And then we just got to walk across North Hagman and we'll be there. I'll tell you what, it is definitely a little nippy. It's, it's like minus 12, but it feels like minus 20 something. Um, but with the wind out here on the lake, it's, it's cold. Nice short little portage. North Hagman. So, yeah, the pictographs are quite a ways up there, but man, what a pretty lake, though. It's just beautiful out here. And as long as you're moving, the temps aren't aren't a problem at all. Well, we're getting there. That's where I came from. This is where I'm headed. I stepped off the trail uh, back behind me quite a ways. And <clears throat> yeah, hopefully this packed trail leads right to those pictographs because I'm not uh, breaking trail. There's overflow underneath the ice. So there's water underneath uh, the snow here. And it just about went over the top of my boots. But lucky for me, the bunny boots are waterproof, you know. Of course, only up to the top, right? But, um, I don't know. It didn't. It didn't fill my boots, so that's good. Unbelievable scenery, though. 
Yeah, the Boundary Waters is a very special place. Like I said, I you know I lived in Alaska, and there's obviously Alaska is incredible with mountains and rivers and you know wilderness as far as you can see. You know, but the Boundary Waters is right up there. It is uh, my favorite place in the world, no doubt about it. It just has a different feel to it, and it is true wilderness. This isn't very far in, you know, but. Um, you can get way, way, way out there, but man, is it beautiful. You know, like I've said before, there's not many places in the world where you can go to lakes that you can just drink out of because the water's so clean. There's no houses, nothing out here, no roads, no noise, just true wilderness. Pretty awesome. Little Pine Martin. Crossing the lake and heading into the woods. We're close. Right up there around that bend is where it starts to narrow. Looks like the trail stops up here, guys. I think we made it. Sweet, I'm excited. Yeah, this is it. Oh, I see him. No way, that's cool. Wow, those are really vivid. Let me get my glove off. There they are. Native American pictographs. Estimated to be 500 to 1,000 years old. So there's a moose, and then it looks like a wolf behind it. Some sort of figure, and then those are canoes up top there. Very cool to see it in person. Definitely, I've seen videos on it and pictures, but yeah, being here and knowing that somebody 500 to 1,000 years ago, whenever it was, was right here in this exact spot and uh, painted those. Very awesome. I have so many questions, I wish I could go back in time. You know, if these truly are, you know, a thousand years old, that's pretty unbelievable that, you know, a thousand years ago, somebody was right here and painted those. You know, I wish I could go back in time. You know, was it a man? Was it a woman? What was the inspiration? It's pretty fascinating stuff. And uh, if they are, you know, a thousand years old, they're in incredible shape still. And they're bigger than what I thought they would be. I thought I thought they were going to be a lot smaller, but they're actually pretty good size. Very cool. It was definitely worth the the hike in. Give you guys one more shot of them. So the pictographs are right there. And this is where the lake narrows and heads into a different lake. So it's a beautiful spot. It's definitely a good place for him. It's hard to leave. They're so cool to look at. But I'm gonna start the journey back to the vehicle. I'm sure Sierra will want to come check these out. We'll probably come back here at some point this winter. I want to show her these. She'd, she'd get a kick out of these. And it's just a nice, you know, short little two and a half mile hike in here. So not bad at all. 
Yeah, what a life those people must have lived. You know, nowadays we've just overcomplicated everything, you know, with money and 401ks. Do I have enough in my retirement account? Oh, oh crap, the car payments do, cell phones do, this, that, this expense, that expense. You know, am I going to have enough money? Am I going to lose my job? It's just, uh, just overcomplicated everything. You know, those people, they spent every single day with their family. They didn't have to go out to work to make money to pay for the stuff. They just produced it themselves. And because of it, I think they lived a much more meaningful, fulfilling, stress-free life. You know, they didn't have a daycare raising their children. You know, they got to spend and cherish, spend all the time, you know, with their kids and, and cherish all those uh, moments rather than having to leave for 8, 10, 12 hours a day and not see them. You know, they got to spend all the time together and make memories and all that. You know, it's like we always think about, like, people back then, how primitive they were. You know, they must have been so dumb, but I don't think they were very dumb. You know, it's uh, not easy living in the wild for sure, but um, certainly a, a very meaningful life. Like I said, with the over, how much we've overcomplicated everything nowadays, you know, and with war, pollution, destruction, and everything, it's, I don't know if we are all that much smarter these days. I wonder what they would think of the, the world today. Probably just shaking their head going, wow, you guys really overcomplicated things. I would say the one advantage we have nowadays is medical help, you know, medicine. Thought the camera died <clears throat> but uh medicine is uh for sure i think the best thing we have going for us today in the modern world but i don't know the life expectancy wasn't you know as high back then but i bet somebody that only lived to be 30 years old i bet they uh did a lot more living than a lot of people nowadays you know nowadays you know, like life is just seems so unsatisfying you know like you go to work whatever you go home and watch a screen and then repeat it's like I don't know I think that's why we have so much anxiety and depression nowadays it's just uh, I think that we've kind of took a wrong turn a little bit compared to what the human experience should be you know money is kind of the ruler of all nowadays and it's too bad because we invented money you know we came up with it it's not needed for life we just you know came up with uh, our system our society and that's the way it is but yeah living the way they did back then with the open land fresh air clean water community oriented spending all your time with your family and your community and friends and really living life, being really connected to the land, I think that's uh, a much more fulfilling, happy lifestyle than what a lot of us live nowadays, you know. I'd love to live that way. So the parking lot's just right up there, but let's go check out the toilet. I don't have to use it, I just want to see how this latrine is. <clears throat> Not a very uh, well used path. Anybody that's using this one, I'm thinking it's an emergency. It's quite a ways back here actually. Huh. I don't see it, the trail stopped. Must be buried around here somewhere. Interesting. Well, that was a nice little stroll. <clears throat> I don't know what time it is, but that could not have taken more than two and a half, three hours. So it's a quick little hike in and out of there and it's a beautiful walk. So if those, those of you that are uh, in Minnesota or not from Minnesota and want to go on a little adventure, 
I, I would recommend checking out the uh, pictographs on North Eggman Lake. Pretty cool, like I said, just a beautiful walk in there. I'd say it's beginner level hike. I mean, it's five miles or so round trip maybe, and uh, not a whole lot of hills. Couple, couple little inclines, but nothing serious. Most of it's just walking across the lake. All right, well, I didn't take any footage after I got back to the car, but I made it back. Sierra did a great job running the homestead here by herself. Um, yeah, she everything. She said everything went great, so I guess she doesn't need me in her life. I don't know. No, I'm just kidding. But um, I'm going to end this video here. It's going to be another really cold night tonight, minus 45 degree Fahrenheit wind chills. So I already brought the chickens inside, but yeah, it's been a, it's been a cold, cold winter. You just don't seem to get a break. Normally when you get these cold snaps, you know, they last for a week or two and then, or, you know, or a week and then they're done. And then, uh, but this one seems to have been lasting for like two weeks or longer now. Um, we had like one or two warm days in between, but, um, it just seems like, uh, it's been chilly this winter, but, uh, you guys have a good, uh, rest of your night and uh i'll see you guys on the next video come on skeeter come come on come get a treat come get a treat skeeter come get a treat come on come get a treat